Atlanta United's second foray into the CONCACAF Champions League begins this week. What can the Five Stripes do to set themselves up to advance? We break it down, next. What's going on, Five Stripe fam? I'm AJ, and this is Tanner McLeod. This video is sponsored by Burr Burr Sushi. Burr Burr Sushi is a Japanese-inspired, fast, casual eatery that offers ramen, sushi burritos, and poke bowls. Burr Burr delivers cuisine that's ethical, delicious, and fast. Guests can create their own rice bowls and sushi burritos through an array of fresh vegetables, marinated meats, and quality sauces. Also now serving a collection of traditional Japanese ramen. Welcome to a match preview special. Atlanta United's 2020 season is finally starting and it's leg one of the round of 16 in the Champions League. And it's against FC Montagua on February 18th on Tuesday. And it's 9 or 10 p.m. depending on where you are. If you're new to the competition, the CCL is the premier continental competition and it's for North America, Central America, and the Caribbean. This is the 12th edition of the competition under its current name of the Scotia CONCACAF Champions League, but it is the 55th edition overall of CONCACAF's premier club competition. Think UEFA Champions League, but just for this hemisphere. Right, but uh, where it's gonna be played, it's going to be at Olympia Metropolitano, and it's not gonna be at actually Messi Montagua's actual home stadium of Estadio Nacional, because there were some renovations that were necessary that were not met. So, sounds we, a lot like Tottenham. Yeah, <laughs> so there will be a little bit of a, yeah, a new kind of a venue for them to play in, so it'll be very interesting. But. So basically a Champions League tie in which neither <laughs> team actually plays in their home stadium. Indeed, but uh, so in terms of uh, TV and where it can be watched, just really quick uh, for at least, I think most of the people that are watching this will be on Fox Soccer Plus. Uh, it will be on some various other ones. We can put it in the description box below. Uh, but this uh, this club, they're going to be a tough one for sure because they are the, one of the most successful and renowned in Honduras. Uh, one of the most successful in terms of they've won 16 uh, professional titles, so not too bad from them either. Uh, it's their 73rd ex uh, year of existence, and it's their 50 fourth consecutive season in the top flight. So lots of uh, really, I think, uh, you know, something to loud for a club of this size in Honduras. They are the 2018 and 19 winners of the Apertura and Clausura. So uh, success and recent success. Exactly. And they're actually building that into their current season as well because they're nine, eight or nine games into their current season and they currently sit in first place on 19 points in the top flight in Honduras. So similar situation kind of to last year with Herediano, but they're performing slightly better in the league than Herediano was. So slight concerns there already. Definitely. But uh, yeah, in terms of their recent form in their last six, they've won four and drawn one. And so it's, yeah, they're in pretty decent form as uh, we are in uh, in our preseason and we've uh, technically been undefeated except for the uh, penalty shootout that we lost. Yeah, undefeated. But, uh, and so it was three wins and two draws. So, uh, you know, in terms of results wise, which you don't really put too much uh, stock into in preseason, we're doing pretty well. But uh, in terms of the match facts for this, um, yeah, FC Matuagua, they haven't lost at home since last October. Uh, they are top of the Clausura right now, and they've outscored their opponents nine to one at home so far. And then they're the only, there's only one other side that have conceded fewer goals at home than them. And that means, yeah. They, so they've only conceded one, so the other team has yeah. only conceded it, It's not ideal, yeah. especially because Atlanta United, as we learned last year under Frank DeBoer, is not a team that performs well on the road. And they took that friendly this past week to Mexico to kind of simulate a Champions League game away. The quality of the opposition is definitely up in the air compared to what they'll be facing this week. And, you know, it's it's the first game of the season. I think that's one of the things that you can't overstate enough is that just like last year, last year was the first experience. So definitely some learning, you know, curves there. But this is the first competitive game that Atlanta United is facing. Whereas Matagua, they're, they're in a room of form. They're match fit. They've been playing competitive games. They are fully ready for this game. And they're so, doing quite and they're well. they're doing quite well. So that's yeah. definitely not 
something that you want to see. You're gonna be playing at altitude, you're gonna be playing in a hostile environment, all those things that are very CONCACAF-y, throw all those in there. So Atlanta have a very tough task on their hands and they're gonna to have to perform better than some of the preseason matches if they'd like to get a result. Right, uh, so also Motagua, they also lead the league in scoring with 18 goals in eight matches. Oh, great, so they're two, more than two goals a game. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so uh, in terms of the players to watch for them, it's uh, Ro Roberto Marrera. I'm sorry, I'm not a native Spanish speaker, so I will struggle a little bit, but I'm trying my best here. But uh, yeah, he's their forward, their Paraguayan. He's got six goals so far. Uh, Robilio Castillo, also a forward. He's Honduran. He's got three goals in consecutive matches. Uh, in three consecutive matches, rather, and so uh, also he's their all-time top scorer. Uh, and also uh, someone to maybe look at, someone that we can get at, is Hector Castellanos, or Castellanos, rather. Uh, he's got double-digit yellow card seasons two years in a row. And also, an uh, interesting note is that Wesley Dacas uh, was recently signed by them Previously, if you uh, keep up with LA United 2, he was a left back for LA United 2. So, interesting, of course, but uh, also for LA United, we, of course, have, uh, you know, Joseph BT Barco, uh, Joseph with the 27 uh, goals last season in the uh, in 2019 with three assists. Uh, but I think another player to watch here is Campbell and Mesa in the back line because they might be forced into uh, positions that they haven't really played as much in the preseason. Uh, yeah, it's going to be tough because of a certain uh, U.S. men's national team, uh, you know, center back that's been a little bit injured uh, since the, the last match. So. Yeah, so speaking of that, we'll actually get into some of the injuries right now. We'll start off with Matagua and their captain, uh, Juan Pablo Montes, who played this past weekend, and he's quite a threat off set pieces. He's one of their better players it's looking like a possibility that he will be missing this game. So at least Matagua will be missing one of their key defensive stalwarts in this game as well, potentially. And also uh, Rubio Castillo, who you mentioned earlier, played um, this past Saturday in the top flight for them in the, in the uh, Honduran top flight, and he potentially may be missing this match as well. And like we said, all-time leading goal scorer, he's very active in their attack. And Matagua is a very attacking team, and that's something we'll highlight a little bit later in the keys of the match. But as far as Atlanta United goes, like you said, there is a big miss there at the back. And unfortunately, Atlanta United will start the season like it ended last season. Right. So, Miles Robinson is injured, of course, as we know. And the prognosis so far is that, well, he got an MRI on Friday, but the actual... Uh, prognosis and how severe it might be is unknown. He will definitely at least miss, miss the two uh, two legs of the, the Champions League in the round of 16. And so uh, beyond that, we don't know too much. So that's really difficult. I mean, yeah, Robinson, huge, huge miss. Uh, Edgar Castillo also is very likely to be missing uh, because of uh, an injury, uh, and so that's uh, a guy that could play at left back or left wing back, so kind of takes out one of those possibilities. George Bello also is another guy that, uh, of course, he suffered uh, that hit injury, had to go to the hospital, and so the extent of what his rehabilitation is is unknown. Hopefully that's not too much. I think uh, Bello even mentioned that, yeah, it wasn't too serious, uh, so that's at Especially least. Especially not as bad as it looked at first when right. he was getting carted off the field. Exactly. But also, Mateos Joseto is also securing a visa permit. And so that's also uh, where he's not available for this match, at least. Or the first leg. I, I mean, the first uh, round. I, I think Frank DeBoer rolled him out of the entire yeah. first and so. second leg. So he's going to be a big miss over both of the legs. And Jack Mulraney Jake is Mulraney, a... Jake uh, Yeah, sorry. Jake Mulraney is a maybe? He's a maybe. Frank DeBoer uh, was hoping that he could be available, but he also uh, is securing a visa permit. Maybe uh, his is not as complicated as Joseto. We'll see. I don't know. But uh, getting into Matagua's uh, possible lineup, you can see on screen here, uh, but they have played with three men in the back before in previous uh, matches, and so they do have some flexibility, and so it will remain to be seen what they will throw up up there. Of course, the two guys that we mentioned that 
may be injured, may not be injured. They could also not be showing up in this lineup as well. So it's also very kaka caffeine, so they might be fine. Who knows? Exactly. But I think the most important thing that people have to note is regardless of what formation Motagua put out there, they are going to be very heavy on the attack side. They will go at Atlanta United. They will not be afraid of Atlanta United. Similar to Herediano. Again, they are match fit. They're in the middle of their season. They're used to each other. They understand what their manager wants, hence why they're doing so well in, in the in the league. So it's gonna be something for Atlanta United to make sure they don't get caught up and lose their heads a little bit like what happened last season in the Champions League. A year of experience, Frank DeBoer will know what to expect a little bit more in terms of the atmosphere, how the game will go, how the officiating is, how the game is played. But again, Atlanta United versus attack sides on the road, it's going to be a very tricky, tricky match. For sure. And so getting into the keys of the game, it's coping without Miles Robinson for sure. Uh, and I think uh, definitely with coping with their attack as well is going to be very interesting because of how potent they are, especially at home, but especially we are going to be shorthanded and having a little bit of a makeshift makeshift defense as well and so uh, it's going to be something to contend with uh, I think also for some of our keys to the game is that uh, the combinations between P.T. Barco and Joseph and also at times uh, Emerson Heinemann as well uh, how much we link up to be able to advance the ball into uh, the final third and you know when we get those chances we gotta put them away but uh, in terms of also uh, some of the new guys that are in the 11, it might be makeshift. They need to avoid making mistakes as much as possible. And if they do, if we concede a goal, not let our heads drop and then concede one or two more as we have seen previously. Exactly, that's something that happened so. last year with Herediano is that once a goal went in, mistakes started being made. And I think it's crazy that, you know, we touch on the first key to the match and it's, it's dealing without Miles Robinson, which this time one year ago, he had his worst game ever for Atlanta United in that first game and everyone's like, can he play this role? Can he do it? He showed us, yes, absolutely he can. And he grew into that. And it's just one of those things where for the second year in a row, Atlanta United is going into their first Champions League game, a bit unsure at the back of what they're going to do. And like you said, it's those, it's not making those mistakes because in a knockout tie like this, it's about limiting your mistakes, getting an away goal, and being able to bring it back home in a winnable situation. And I think that's one of those things with Atlanta United with a lot of new players. That's one of the big differences, I think, is that last year there was mostly continuity between the team that won MLS Cup and the team that started in the Champions League, minus, of course, the big, which the big one, which is Miguel Almiron. Mm -hmm. This year, there's a lot of differences. There's no Darlington Nagby. There's no Julian Gressel. There's no LGP. It's some big misses. There's no Michael Parkhurst in his experience. So you lost a lot, and you have new guys coming in in a very difficult situation because CONCACAF Champions League is unlike really any other competition. There's the memes about things being concacaf with refs and, you know, where you visit and fireworks going off outside of your hotel or whatever this, the weird things are. It's going to happen. Weird stuff happens in CONCACAF. And Atlanta United has to be able to, like you said, keep their head up, not lose their focus, and keep going regardless of what gets thrown at them. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you know, looking at preseason and the totality of how we were playing, uh, let's get into our predicted 11. Uh, I think, of course, we have Guzan between the sticks here. That's one of the easier ones. Yeah, indeed. But uh, in terms of the shape, it seems like so far it's been 3-4-3 and that's, uh, or 3-4-2-1, 3-4-5-2, however you want to uh, lay it out. But uh, there are some kind of, uh, you know, we switched formations last match to kind of see if we could do it. Uh, Campbell started to be on the left a little bit. Uh, I don't think we start in a four-man back line here. Uh, I think we go with what the continuity has been and what I think the team is most familiar with. And if it doesn't work, then maybe they switch. But uh, in terms of that back line, we also have some differences. So uh, you go with yours first. So I think we both have Franco Escobar starting as the right-sided center yes. back, followed by Mesa in the middle because that's really the two. They're your experienced guys. I think well, where we differ is that I have Campbell starting at the left center back spot. He's the one that came on for Miles. Robinson he's played there quite a bit this preseason and no one else has really played at that center back spot this season and in the preseason so my gut even though he's inexperienced I just have a feeling that that's where we're going to see him it's going to be a trial by fire and if he can step up and he can stand it then it's going to go a long way towards his confidence and his development but on the flip side you also risk kind of what happened with Miles Robinson last year at Herediano or even George Bello and you know where the inexperience maybe showed and so I actually don't have Mesa in the middle of that my back line, I have Larry in the middle. 
Uh, where, yeah, I mean, pretty much he's, when he's dropped between some center backs, that's kind of the position that he has played. Uh, I feel like there was at least slight continuity there. And then Mesa, definitely uh, a little bit more two-footed, can play on that left center back side. Uh, I think there's more experience here than maybe the alternative. And so that's where I'm going with Larry in the middle, hopefully. And it also short, gives you that flexibility because, like you said, he's used to dropping in between the back line and maybe he can step up the field a bit more into midfield and be comfortable in that area mm -hmm. or step a little bit further ahead of Escobar and Mesa and be comfortable in that area right in front of the, the back four or the back right. of the fence, I guess. Right, and definitely we won't be able to play as kind of maybe swashbuckling as we want to normally if we have a Miles Robinson at the back in the middle there. Where you know he well. can just pace anybody and body them off the ball because his 1v1 defending is just outstanding. Exactly. And so, uh, you know, in terms of that, that's where we have so far. And then into the wing backs, I think it's Lennon. I think we agree there. Uh, where it's at the left wing back, it's where we don't really know who's available. And so the person that played la their last match uh, probably is going to start as. You know, he's probably more match fit than uh, the alternative. And so it's probably Anton Walks. Yeah, I, I can't find any argument there. I think if Mulraney is fit, then that's potentially an option as well. But Walks is probably more of the defensive option as well because he is more naturally inclined to be more of a defender than Mulraney is. And then getting into the middle, both of us have Emerson Hyman starting. He's one of your best midfielders that you have. Regardless of your opinion on him, he's one of the midfielders that Atlanta has and he's going to be starting. And then it's where it's different is because you have Jeff Lorenowitz in defense. I do not. I have him in midfield because I think you need his experience there in front of an inexperienced defense potentially, or an, at least a defense that hasn't played together very much and doesn't sure. have a lot of chemistry in real match situations that count and matter. Yeah. Um, but who do you have in midfield next time? Yeah, I have Eric Rometty, and uh, I think, uh, yeah, he'll have to do a chop here because, yeah, Larry is being pulled out of position. And so, uh, yeah, Rometty will kind of have to do what he doesn't really do a ton and is sit right in front of the defense. Be disciplined. Yeah, and so this will be very difficult, but I think, uh, you know, he, he will have to do it. And so uh, getting into, yeah, of course, the, the front three, it's Barco, it's PT, it's Joseph. It picks itself. Yeah, exactly. Where they play, it's really interchanged, except for Joseph Otapa, of course. But uh, yeah, what would we like the team to do, though, in this game in order for us to be successful? So I think that's one of the things that a lot of people were looking for, including Frank DeBoer himself in preseason. He commented on it after the Birmingham Legion game is that he wants this team to be quicker with the ball. And I think that's in multiple phases of the game. I think the team needs to be quick transitioning from defense to attack. Matago will be pushing men forward. They're gonna be attacking Atlanta United, which means there's going to be opportunities for space at the back. Atlanta United has to be able to quickly and fluidly transition the ball from defense to attack and get the ball to their forward players, like a PT, like a Barco, like a Joseph, because if they're able to do that, they'll be able to get that crucial away goal. Two is incredible, but one is so, so important because that away goal counts for so much. And I think also it's important that when Atlanta United has the ball in the final third, something we've seen throughout the preseason is the ball moves too slow. The team's not decisive enough and eventually it comes down to a hopeful cross into the box to a Joseph who's marked by two or three men. The guys have to be quicker on the ball in their decision making and move it to move Matagua around when Atlanta United has possession. Right, and uh, I mean, I, I would hope this would, could happen, but I think maybe this uh, might be a little bit too ambitious for this type of match is that uh, if the opportunity arises we should throw some numbers forward to actually try to uh, get more numbers in the box and maybe score that crucial away goal that we need but it, we risk going too far up and then we get caught on a counter where we don't have anybody that can uh, recover and so and that's uh, something that Atlanta has looked vulnerable in potentially in their last couple of preseason matches is the capability of being caught on the counter and that's something that can absolutely happen when you play with the back line that hasn't played a lot together which leads to another thing is the communication the communication between that back line is going to be key and two of your guys in Mesa and Escobar are both Spanish speakers they're going to be comfortable I think a little bit more comfortable Campbell if he plays or Lorenowitz when he plays I think Larry will be a little bit more comfortable because of his experience but if Campbell is to play he's going to have to be very switched on and aware and listening to what's going on because if anyone is caught out of position, Matago will take advantage of that and they will go out, you know, I think they'll target whoever they find to be the weak link and that's going to be a difficult situation. It's going to be a tough match for Atlanta United and that kind of gets us into our score prediction about how we feel this game is going to go. 
Do you want me to start or do you want to start? Uh, I'll start. I mean, uh, yeah, I think we may have to be a little bit more pragmatic here. We don't maybe, uh, you know, at all times just try, try to take risks. And so uh, it is where I feel like we can grab something here. And uh, this would be, I think, a fantastic result if we can actually pull it off. It would be 1-1. One, one. Uh, we get that away goal and we limit what <laughs> potential damage we could incur. So yeah. what about you? For me, I'm a little bit more pessimistic, not necessarily because I'd like to see the team lose, but just my gut feeling with the roster turnover, with the injury to Miles Robinson, who is absolutely one of the last people this team can afford to get hurt. And based off the performances in the last couple of preseason matches, Atlanta United looked pretty gassed at the end of the match last Tuesday in Mexico. And they didn't look very joined up either. And yes, there were some moments in the in the game against Birmingham as well, but nothing that really looked free flowing, especially from the front three. Yes, they have been together for a year, but they haven't played a lot together. I just don't see the attacking fluidity yet from this side. So I'm gonna say Matagua, who is in the middle of their season, are gonna get a 2-0 win. But similar to last year, I think Atlanta United will still be able to overturn that deficit in the second leg. Just this seems like a very difficult match, first match of the season. There's a lot of things going against the five stripes, but I'm gonna say 2-0, which isn't ideal, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Definitely not. But that's pretty much our match preview. Let us know what your score prediction is in the comments below. But for Tanner, I'm AJ. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.